morning, everyone. Welcome to worship on this very joyful morning. We have a lot of wonderful things going on. Um, we will be confirming four of our youth this morning, so we give thanks um, to God for that. Um, our trunk retreat is happening after worship during the Sunday school time, which there are already people here who are super excited about it. We have celebrity in the back, Batman is here and has joined us for worship. It's like a highlight of my career. I'm letting you all know. I get to give communion to Batman. Um, this is the last day for our October outreach that is going to NAMI of the Lake Superior South Shore, which um, the funding will go towards building housing for those in mental health crisis. Um, we have met our goal for cranberries. So, um, Paula will be taking those to the food shelf for the Thanksgiving baskets. And today is Noisy Offering Sunday. So we are just doing all the things today, this morning, and it will be a very joyful um, celebration of worship. Any other announcements that I'm missing? All right, seeing none, I'll invite you to stand as you are able as we begin with our confession and forgiveness that you can find on page 77 in the Green Hymnal. And we begin our service in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is Reformation Sunday, another reason to celebrate, and I want to give thanks to our praise band who is helping us with music this morning. We're going to kick it off with A Mighty Fortress is Our God, number 229 in the Green Hymnal. Let us sing.
continue on page 78. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. This holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel. And bestow on the church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. <clears throat> Today's first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. I will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors, whom I took by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know me, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Here ends the reading. Um, today's psalm is found on page 236, Psalm 46, page 236 in the green book, and we will read it responsibly. <clears throat> Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be moved. Though its waters rage and foam, The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. 
There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall not wait. The Lord of hosts is with us. God has shaken his strong. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. The awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. Be still then and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our Today's second reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for though the law comes, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, righteousness of God has been disclosed, and it is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Jesus, Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? Is it excluded? By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we behold that a person is justified by faith apart from the works prescribed by the law. Here ends the reading. Would you please rise for the reading of the Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to John, the eighth chapter. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and I'm going to invite the kids to come forward for a children's message. I'm going to have you all sit right in front of me, because i got to sit down right in front of me and face me. Come on up. <clears throat> come on up, have a seat. All right. Good morning, everyone. Morning. So I have, I have a friend with me this morning. This is Martin Luther. Today is Reformation Sunday, which is why everything is red, and we celebrate who we are as Christians and who we are as Lutherans today. So I'm going to set him right there for now, and I have this really awesome book about who Martin Luther is because we might not all know who he is. Are you ready? Many years ago, there lived a young man named Martin Luther. Young Martin was studying to be a lawyer, but one day he got caught in a terrible storm. 
He was so afraid that he promised to God he would become a monk if he escaped the storm. The storm died down, and Martin kept his promise. Martin Luther devoted his life to God. He began studying the Bible, where he read for himself what it said about having faith in Jesus. In his reading, Martin discovered the very good news that we are saved by faith. Martin Luther didn't like what the church was teaching about faith and good works. He especially didn't like the teaching that Christians could go to heaven faster by paying money to go to church. So he wrote down 95 theses explaining his disagreements, then shared them for others to read. Not everyone agreed with Martin. They were so mad that they brought him before the Holy Roman Emperor and asked Martin to take back everything he'd said. But he refused and stood by his beliefs. Martin Luther's life was in danger. On his way back home, the carriage he was riding in was surrounded by riders. Were they enemies? No, the riders were friends. They'd come to take Martin away to a castle where he would be safe. Martin Luther kept writing his ideas about God, grace, and faith. His writings were printed and spread far and wide. He translated the Bible into German so that everyday people could read it and think about it for themselves. Martin Luther inspired a reformation of the church. Many women and men followed in Martin's footsteps by introducing new ideas and big changes. Even today, Christians reform the church as we read the Bible, listen to the Holy Spirit, and follow Jesus in faith. Martin Luther did some pretty cool things from the church, but one of the main things that I want you to remember is about God's love for you. There is nothing you can do to make God love you more, and there is nothing you can do to make God love you less. God loves you so very much. Will you pray with me? And can you repeat after me nice and loud so that everyone can hear you? All right, repeat after me. Dear God, God, we love you so much. Thank you you. for helping us us to know your love love. and to know that you you love us so much. much. Help us to share that with others. others. In your name we pray. (coughs) Men, Men. all right, you can come get... Candy, one to keep and one to share with someone. And then you could head back. Thanks for coming up this morning. Uh, Probably, I don't know. and head back to your seat. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us. Love, forgiveness, and hope are within us. In the name of God who sent Jesus and the Holy Spirit to show us that we matter and we are loved. Amen. I want to tell you about one of the greatest Christmas gifts that I've gotten. When I was younger, I loved horses. 
I took horseback riding lessons that my grandpa took me to. I collected those briar horse figurines and would play with those all the time. I would take care of them as if I had my own horses. And so for one year, for Christmas, my dad built me a wooden stable for my horses, complete with movable barn doors that slid on a track, barn windows with tiny bars in them, and a big hayloft on top. I remember feeling so much joy and excitement as I saw that gift presented to me. I had a big smile on my face, and I can just picture the photo that we took, Dad and I behind the stable, smiling big. It was a great gift. You could tell by the big smile. Did I deserve such a great gift? Probably not. I wasn't always the best kid. I would talk back to my parents. I would argue with them about going outside to play when there were chores or things to do. My room would get messy, and I would hoard things under the bed and in the closet to make it look clean, but it wasn't clean. Yet I got the gift anyway. Why? Because my parents loved me. Why do we give a gift to anyone but to show them that we love and care about them? You receive a gift every day from your Lord Jesus Christ, and that is the gift of salvation. You have not earned this gift. After all, we are sinners who fall short of the glory of God. We sin against God, against one another, against ourselves. And yet, God gives you Jesus every day to save you. And yet, God forgives you of your sins every day. Why? Because God loves you in Jesus Christ. As we hear in our Romans text, nothing can separate you from the love of God or the gifts that God gives you. And in Ephesians 2, we hear a further reminder of this, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works. For we are what God has made us. Today is Reformation Sunday, where we celebrate our Lutheran history and the work that Martin Luther did to challenge the status quo of the time and fight against the belief that we had to earn our way into heaven by payment or the things we do because we cannot earn this salvation. We could go to church every moment of every day, give away all of our income. We could do the things that we associate with being holy, and we will still fall short, because we are humans, and we make mistakes. We fall short. For Martin Luther, it is all about grace. It is about the power of the cross, the power of the resurrection that frees us and reminds us every day of this gift. These are powerful reminders. We are reminded of our salvation. We are reminded that we are freed from sin and death. We are reminded that we have a place prepared for us in heaven. And we are reminded that we are free to be who God has made us to be. Because we're not trying to earn favor or score points, we can truly love and serve our neighbors, our community, and God. And we do this because we're not trying to attain something, but because we've already been given something, an incredible and powerful gift. So my young friends in Christ who are being confirmed today, when you go through life, you're going to have your ups and your downs. You're going to have crazy things happen. You're going to have times of disappointment. You're going to fail a task. The person you ask out on a date is going to say no. You might not get that starting spot on the team. You might lose a friendship or a loved one. Things are going to happen. There are also going to be people in the world that tell you that you aren't good enough that you're less than, that you're somehow separate or away. But God has a different message for you. You are loved no matter what. When you make a big mistake, you are still loved. When you have that big success, you are still loved, and no matter what, you are always loved. 
If there's one thing I want you to remember from today and your time in confirmation, I hope it's you that you remember that God loves you no matter what. He sent Jesus to be your savior, to remind you that you are loved, and you are loved how you are, no matter what, no matter what anyone else says. Today is only the start of your faith journey. It is not the end. It's a wonderful and hopeful beginning. I hope you remember that God sent Jesus Christ to you and for you, and sends Jesus to be with you each and every day. And if you forget, I hope you come here. And we will remind you. We will remind you how much you are loved and cared for. And to you, people of God, no matter your successes or failures in life, I hope that you will remember that Jesus loves you and has given his life for you. You have been made free to be who you are in the world to love and serve your neighbors, to be a beacon of hope in a world of darkness, and to know that you are filled and gifted with grace, hope, and love because Christ has given that all to you. It's the greatest gift ever, even better than a wooden stable. For that, we can say thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day this morning is Shine, Jesus, Shine, that you can find in the blue hymnal, um, number 651, Would You Please Rise. you to turn to the affirmation of baptism insert that's in your bulletin. (laughs) 
you're good. Dear friends in Christ, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of baptism into Christ. Michelle, <laughs> Ellie Hansen, Olivia Kopetsky, and Camden Kroll, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these sisters and brothers whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called them to yourself. Enlighten them with the gifts of your spirit and nourish them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Will the congregation please rise? Get some good Lutheran aerobics this morning. Together with your siblings in Christ, you wish to profess your faith in God and reject sin. We make these bold statements of faith not because we are absolutely certain about these things, but because we are always becoming faithful to them and learning to wrestle with these claims about our relationship with God. We join our voices with yours to remind you that we are all in this together. When you were baptized, we stood with you to speak God's truth about power, value, and love. We promise to reject the voices that would challenge your first and forever identity as beloved children of God. And now we invite you to stand with us in defiance of the forces of sin and evil, trusting that the same spirit who had the power to raise Jesus Christ from the dead is alive in you. So to you confirmands, do you reject the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that pull us away from God? If so, say, we do. People of God, do you promise to continue supporting these children of God, affirming them through all circumstances with their first and forever name, Beloved? Do you promise to hold healthy and safe space to keep them growing in faith so they learn to trust there is nothing that they can make them do, to, nothing they can make God love them any more or any less than they already are loved in Jesus? If so, answer by saying, we do. We, do. we are church together, so let us confess our shared faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. Do you believe in God the Father? God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Your baptism gathered a cloud of witnesses to speak promises on behalf of the whole Christian church. Your spiritual family grew to include sponsors, friends, and church members who have been keeping these promises and carrying your faith on your behalf. Today we ask you to make these same promises, claiming your call to active participation in the nurturing of your spirit and the work of the church on earth. So will you join us in practicing your faith and keeping these responsibilities to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, 
to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, to strive for justice and peace in the world. If so, say, I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. All right, you two can have a seat. We'll have you spread out, and I'll invite Mason's family to come forward. We'll have you kneel. Either one's fine. The top one's fine. And I'll invite the family to place a hand on a shoulder. Mason has chosen Philippians 4.13 as his verse. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Stir up in Mason the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Stand up. Congratulations. Get that back to your seat. And I'll invite Ellie's family to come forward. Ellie has chosen Jeremiah 5, 23, and 24 for her confirmation verse. But these people have stubborn and rebellious hearts. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say to themselves, let us fear the Lord our God, who gives autumn and spring rains in season, who assures us of the regular weeks of harvest. Stir up in Ellie the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Stay up. Congratulations. You can have a seat. I'll invite Olivia and Camden to come forward, and Olivia's family can come on up. I'll have you kneel. All right. Olivia has chosen Ephesians 1, 7 through 8 as her confirmation verse. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and insight. Stir up in Olivia the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. You can stand on up. Congratulations. You can all have a seat. And I will invite Camden's family to come on up. Have you kneel. There you go. Camden has chosen Joshua 1.9 as his confirmation verse. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Stir up in Camden the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Congratulations, you can have a seat. And I'm going to invite you all to come actually back up to your spots. And you're going to turn and face the congregation.
Let us rejoice with these sisters and brothers in Christ. We celebrate your faith, your voice, and your unfolding story as beloved children of God. On behalf of the whole church on earth, we will continue to pray for your faith, give thanks for you, and proclaim the good news to all the world. God bless you. All right, you can have a seat. Thank you. That was always the most awkward part for me, too. I'll invite the congregation to please rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving God, we give thanks for those who affirmed their baptism this morning. May they always remember that they are not alone in life or their life of faith, and that this community will continue to support and uplift them in all that they do. Guide them to share of your love with others. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, you know all our hurts and sorrows. Give healing to all who need it in body, mind, and soul and inspire us to bring your love and compassion to all who suffer. Be with those who grieve the loss of loved ones. May you walk with them in their mourning. We ask you to be with those whose names are on our hearts and minds and those known only to you. Lord, in your mercy. Your Almighty God, we continue to pray for places around the world that face violence, conflict, or unrest. Comfort your people and remind them that you are with them always. Be with those who are in positions of power, that they may lead and govern with peace and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, in love you have saved us and redeemed us. You sent your only Son to defeat sin and death and give us eternal life in you. May we lean into your promises and live out your love each day as we serve our neighbors and honor you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, on this day of reformation, may you continue to remind us that the church is a place that is ever-changing and continues to grow. Help us to follow your will in our lives, to look out for the least, the lost, the forgotten, the oppressed, the left out and left behind. Help us to proclaim the gospel in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord is with you always. Also with you. I will invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbor, and then we will receive our offering and noisy offering.
there's some more. Oh, whoa, you got a lot. Oh. Would you please rise? Let us pray our offertory prayer that you can find on page 88. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now hear the word of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now, the table is set, and our Lord Jesus Christ invites you to receive the gifts of God for you, the people of God. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, poured out for you. If you commune in the church that you attend, you are welcome to commune with us this morning. Grape juice and gluten-free wafers are available. Please follow the instructions of the ushers. We will commune the four confirmands first, and then we will start with this side. You may be seated.
please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this sacrament. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now receive the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Our sending song this morning is in the green hymnal, number 509. Onward, Christian soldiers, let us sing. (laughs) 